Hello, my name's host Eric. I'm just talking to famous people. I'm here with some new friends. Uh, Milkman, Krat, QB Sauce is an old friend. Texas Hayes is on the mic. And he asked me to talk a little bit about NE and the way in which it uh, it re relates to seeing what's not there. So, I mean, extroverted intuition, foremost, it's a perceiving function which says it's how we reflexively relate cognitively to things in the world that we encounter. If you are an SE person, you might, if you think about it as a path, okay, the any is the, is the part that says, well, let's make a new path. If you're an SE person, you're saying, let's walk along this path. If you are an SI person, you're saying, let's plan out the path we're going to walk along and keep track of the path we've already walked. If you're a TI person, you're saying, let's evaluate this path and see if it's the right path to be on. If you're a TE person, you're saying, let's make sure we can use a reliable system of moves to establish path-related things. If you're in E though, you are about, let's make a new path. So the problem that we have is about the one of possibilities. When we encounter a set of data in the world, we come up with a bunch of possible things we could do with it meaning-wise. That is to say, oh, I see this, I read something in the newspaper and I think, aha, you know what would be a really good idea is somebody would try to sell this in this way because of this thing I just read in the newspaper. That's a very oh. any sort of thing. Now, I might have a ton of those ideas, I can have only actually follow through on a couple of them, and even that is going to be questionable. So you've got to kind of pick yep. your battles really carefully. That's the mm -hmm. challenge for the NE DOM is figuring out something that they can and want to stick with, and it has to afford them a lot of variety right, because right. ultimately we're about what's not there. So we want to see the new way of doing something. It's a novelty-driven function, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, that means coming up with new ideas or re repositioning something so that yeah. however it was understood before, it's understood differently now and for hopefully better impact or something like that. I don't know. Is that I, I guess um, yeah. most of my, um, I mean, talking about repositioning, it comes on just from observing certain things. Um, it, it, I find it not rare, but it, it's more often from observe a, a certain thing that I can make a calculation saying, oh, what, what if they went about it? This way, or what if they what they told it, you know, this way, instead of coming with an idea completely out of my head. Um, so that uh, that's something that I'm trying to um, to work on, and, and instead of just making a critique to uh, like a newspaper article, like you said, it's just to come up with a whole article by myself, you know. But every every idea is spawned from a, a previous idea, I, I guess. In some well, that's form fine. Or another. I mean, look. There's nothing wrong with that methodology. You'll have to get used to and become more familiar with introverted intuition. What you're basically saying is, I'm not feeling a lot of introverted intuition ideas right now. I'm not saying, oh, here's a whole musical notion that's come to my attention all at once as a whole piece of, of truth. Well, that's because you're not an introverted intuitor. What will happen is if you practice freestyling a lot, and uh, that can be either freestyling songs or freestyling raps or just making shit up and recording it and keeping track of it and looking at the then looking back at the things you've already recorded and finding the good bits, right? right that process right, of finding right. the good bits is refining your NI. You're never going to be conscious with it because it's your sixth function, but you'll get better at it. And when you get really comfortable with it, you'll find your shit gets much more hooky, intuitive, catchy, people like it better, stuff like that. Got it. I keep getting to mess with the lights because I don't want it to look dumb. <laughs> I gotta go get another light here. Josh, do you have anything to say about your experience with an ENTP regarding extroverted intuition, this possibility generator, and the difficulty in pinning down which ideas to follow through on and which ones not to? It's a horrible disease. Tell us about it. I've been looking for a cure for it for a long time. Um. <laughs> As an idea generator, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess the way that I, I guess sort of my thought process is, uh, well, I don't know if this is exactly 
I don't know if this is exactly an answer to the question, but I've, I've discovered that like when I'm in class or something, uh, information is generally presented much too slowly. Like there's not enough to think about. So I don't right. know if that really is in the same direction as what you're describing, but uh, just generally speaking, I feel like I think better almost when I have a lot of material to work with and I'm trying to discover how it all relates or how it's all connected. But when yeah. you have ideas about things you might do. Hello, BJF. Let's see what he says. So he's talking about getting used to NI and having certain circumstances in which it comes out more. I do find that I have certain circumstances in which it comes out more, uh, particularly uh, musical situations. So I think whatever it is you're creating, if you're in a creative space, you're in an extroverted intuition space, and that's going to uh, influence the way you interact with that thing. Mm -hmm. So any other thoughts on extroverted intuition? and the, the experience of it as what's not there? Um, well, I, I guess kind of like what you were saying earlier was the, um, you know, just, just make what, what you want to make, make what's in your head. You don't need a uh, cover song or anything like that. Um, but my philosophy is, is that once you get, you know, those ideas in your head and in your DNA, then they can be projected out into your, your own ideas, you know, with a certain twist on it. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Stevie Ray Vaughan became a great guitarist because he copied Jimi Hendrix his whole, you know, early half of his life. You know, so I feel like um, generating ideas will come from whatever you're interested. In. You know, I don't have the NI, so I can't just spontaneously come up with a great idea. But I, if I have a reference point from something I'm interested in, then I can expand on that and make it my own. You know, I, at least I think it's my own. I don't think. I'm a complete copy when um, I hear a certain verse or a certain uh, a certain musical idea or you know certain something you know I feel like I can I can um, understand what that per where that person's coming from and then decide to uh, to make it how I want to make it you know in a certain way. Um. Well, here's the thing. In my opinion, it's it's you do need. SI stuff to generate possibilities from. In other words, you need past experiences and a reference of data points to generate new ideas from. But that the challenge is going to be for you to is to weigh much more heavily on the generating of new ideas. Because what you have the ability to do naturally as an NE DOM is to say, okay, here's this here's one thing I learned. Now if I change the rhythm like this, it sounds different. Now if I change the rhythm like that, it sounds like a different thing. Get used to playing yeah. very small little chunks of ideas and saying that's a distinct thing because it is slightly different than the other one. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find that you've got plenty of stuff to work with. Your fingers will figure shit out by accident. You'll you'll re trip over and try to figure it out again. As long as you have everything recorded, you'll and you're just fucking around all the time. You'll come up with good bits, and then increasing your fucking around will be filled with good bits. And pretty mm -hmm. soon you'll be able to freestyle whole songs that are pretty good. You know, it's never be going to be quite the same as writing them out ahead of time, but um, yeah. it gets I think, close. Um, I think debate is a process that is really conducive to developing that talent. And I remember something I discovered when I was much younger was that if you know I was asked a question that I didn't know the answer to, if I just started talking, I'd figure it out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In yeah. fact, you probably determined that you didn't really know whether you knew the answer to it until you tried to answer it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, I'll find out whether I know the answer to this amidst bullshitting, right? Yeah, it's not like I get, I began a conversation earlier at dinner, or I didn't begin the conversation, but I began a response with, no, 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 that's not right. I had no idea where I was going with it. I was just going to keep going until I happened upon something, you know? <laughs> but yeah. That's kind of how we roll. So you got to embrace that reality and know that sometimes it falls apart too, and you just go, oops, sorry, I had a little any collapse there. Shit fell apart on me. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts on extroverted intuition? 
No, I don't think so. Okay, so let's stop this video and let's do the next video in which David is going to explain to us that in fact, despite all of our disbelief, ghosts do exist.